G'day guys, this is Sheldrake again from the Armour Community Ostac, and I'm here for another part of my little editing series, um, just focusing on the Armour 2 editor, and this also can carry over an Armour 3 as I've stated earlier. So in this section, we're just going to go over um, a certain objective of clearing an area, um, the different methods that you can use in clearing areas, and then also um, just the triggers involved in that sort of situation. But firstly, I'd just like to uh, say that this sort of mission is very well suited to uh, certain towns, um, military areas such as fobs and the sorts. Um, it is important when you're using towns that um, you select a town that's got a number of different enterable buildings. That way it can make the mission nice and dynamic uh, and also um, very fluid for the player. Um, so in terms of the methods, uh, the methods used to place down troops, uh, I have a linear method that I can use and also a non-linear method. So the first uh, linear method is simply placing AI in different building locations um, or positions rather. So this is done by just selecting your player or you know spawning in a player and we'll just make him the playable one for the moment. And then what you see this number here we're going to have to sort this out or line this up with a uh, ID from the map. So we went through that on the first uh, episode of the 2D editor. As you can see here, we've got the uh, IDs for all these buildings here. What we're going to want to do is to correlate that with this number here. So 276864. And what we're just going to do is building position number one. I'm going to preview that and see how it goes. Okay, and you can see here that our playable unit has just been placed down in this building, and that is obviously building, oh sorry, position number one. So that's rather easy, and that's just the first part of this linear method. So for the second part of this linear method, I generally like to have uh, some patrols roaming around just to make the um, mission a little more um, dynamic. So all you have to do is place down an infantry group, you know, it can be whatever you like, um, and then I just give them some simple waypoints. So it might just be, say this is a target compound, their waypoints might just be you know, around there. So I give them limited so they're walking, and I'll just form a square around. Now, what I do for the last waypoint, if I want them to continue that cycle, is change the type to cycle. And that means that they will continually just rotate around there in that same pattern. Uh, and that, that first method is just as simple as that. So the second method for this type of mission, and, one that, and the one which I usually prefer, is actually a script made by a guy on Armaholic called Zerilia. I'm going to print out, I know I've pronounced that wrong, but all it requires you to do is download the script and I'll provide a link in the description to that one. And then all you have to do is execute this line of code in the squad leaders in it for each squad that you want to perform this action. So this is relatively straightforward. Uh, this, as with almost every other bit of code, this means this unit, so that's this commander and his squad, 100 is the radius for which buildings they will look for to in order to garrison. Um, and it will be random every time as to which ones they choose. It can be, yeah, completely dynamic. Yeah, false. You can choose between true or false for this one. And that is whether they will move if, if their enemy is detected in that area. So this can, can, can create a sort of a counter-attack sort of feel. Um, as if you've entered a village... And then when you're uh, detected, you'll get enemies coming out of buildings at you. So it'll just make for a uh, pretty tense situation. 80% uh, here, or sorry, 80, is for the percentage of positions to fill in a building. Uh, and this one here is the maximum from that squad in a building. I tend to set that to zero. That way they can uh, fill as many as they like. Uh, and this one here, I have had troubles with this one in the past. Uh, because what this is, is warping. Now what that means is once uh, the AI, AI have spawned into this position, they can either warp to the positions that they choose, 
or they can just walk as you know as a normal player would. Um, I have found that in the past that if I set that to true, so they do warp. If there is a lot of AI in a small area with limited buildings that they can get in, um, when one dies in the position that they choose, another one will warp straight to that position. So it's careful not to populate the area too much, and if you do, then set that as false. That way they will still walk to that position. So just to show you how the triggers work for this one, I'm just going to change the radius to 50 to make it a bit of a smaller area. Uh, and I'm just going to place them in this compound. So it's a little bit more predictable for my sake. Now what you're going to do is open up a trigger. Give that a, you know, yeah, I suppose 70 will do for this one. Now you can select one of two options. Now the first one might be independent, not present. And what that means is that you have, or you, or you know, the cooperative mission, the players, uh, have to go in and simply kill all the independents or whatever side you choose. Uh, kill them all in that area and then it will hint the, or trigger the uh, activation. Now again that can be whatever you want. You can refer to my last tutorial uh, about you know, hints and what you can do there. Um, or you can go down to seized. Now what this means, uh, and it's a little bit more trickier, However, the game takes into or the game calculates um, who is in uh, a superior position in that in that area of the trigger. So that's affected by the amount of units. So, you know, say Op Four has ten units in there, Independent has ten, then that's not going to trigger because it's not a uh, you know not one-sided yet. However, if Op Four also has say one T90 in there, it's going to trigger. Um, it's going to trigger because Op Four have the uh, majority in there and they have you know, power. Uh, so it's a little bit more complicated but the game does the work for you there and it makes it a little bit more realistic because you technically don't have to kill all the enemies for them to uh, or for them to be beaten. So we'll just uh, enter here and give this a shot. We'll select this player that I had up here. Put him over the other side of this wall and we'll check it out. Okay, so I've just sped up that footage a little bit, just so uh, it's a little bit less tedious to watch. Um, a way that we can further enhance the mission uh, and also tidy up the map a little bit is if we have markers to indicate where the objectives are, what you need to clear and whatnot. Uh, you can get rid of those after objectives are achieved. So in the on activation section as well, if we just put a semicolon there. What you can do is put the marker name, so that is OBJ1 for objective 1, set marker alpha. Then what you just do there is 0, and that'll get rid of it completely, so you won't be able to see it. It's not deleted, but you won't be able to see it. And now, what that'll do is when all independents, or rather, when this area is seized by OP4, it'll send the hint to the players and it'll also uh, make that marker not visible anymore. It is also important to remember that this can be used in a different way. So when one objective has been completed, you can make another one visible by changing that zero to a one, and that'll mean that that marker has its full visibility. 
You can also change that to numbers in between, such as 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and whatnot, um, to make it visible, but it doesn't dominate the screen. So that's it for this part of the series. Um, st stand by, and I'll give you some more tutorials coming up soon. Don't forget, if you want, make some requests, and I'll get it done. Cheers.